Today's lesson is called square roots. We're going to start with an opening exercise. So at this time, would you please pause the video and try questions one through four on your own. When you're ready, you can resume the video to discuss the answers with me. Number one says, determine the positive square root of 81 if it exists and explain. So we have the square root of 81, we know as nine because if we take nine and times it by itself, or in other words, do nine squared, we know that the answer is 81. Number two, determine the positive square root of 225 if it exists, explain. So if we have the square root of 225, we have 15. And that's because 15 times 15, or 15 times itself, which is 15 squared as well, is 225. When we get to number three, the square root of negative 36, it does not exist. If you were to type this in your calculator, you would get an error message. Now there's two ways you can explain this. You can say no value times itself equals negative 36. So that's one option. Another option would be to say that there is no value of x that satisfies the equation x squared equals negative 36. That's not going to happen. Number four, determine the positive square root of 49 if it exists. So if I take the square root of 49, it is seven, and that's because seven times itself, or seven squared, equals 49. So going back to revisit square roots, to make sure you're comfortable with that concept. Also want to talk about how it applies on a number line. A lot of times with these types of numbers, you are asked to locate their location on a number line. And I want you to think about a different way to look at it. If we were trying to place these numbers, we could get out the calculator, find out their decimal approximations, but we can also just go ahead and think about these in terms of square roots. So zero stays zero, but one is really the square root of one because one times itself is one. Two can be thought of as the square root of four because two times two gives you that four. Three would be thought of the square root of nine and four would be the square root of 16. So then when we go to place these types of numbers on a number line, it becomes much easier. I don't need to use my calculator. If someone asks me to put square root of three on the number line, well, I know I'm just going to put it very close to square root of four. If someone asks me to place the square root of seven, I know it's gonna be a little bit more than halfway between two and three. The square root of 10 would be just past three because the square root of nine is the same thing as three. And now placing these numbers on the number line becomes much easier. So now what I would like you to do is try exercises five through nine. However, we will do number six together as a model. So let's model number six, and then I will give you time to try your exercises. The question four, five through nine is for you to determine the positive square root of the number given. If the number is not a perfect square, I want you to determine which integer the square root would be closest to, and then use your calculator to give an approximate answer to one or two decimal places. So I will show you the difference between those two with number six. We'll do number six together. So first, let's talk about how, how we will say which integer it is going to be closest to. And you do not need a calculator for this. We want to think to ourselves, what two perfect squares is 62 between? So I know that just below 62, as far as the next perfect square that's smaller, would be 49. 62 would be sandwiched in the middle. And then the next perfect square would be 64. Okay, so if I were to take the square root of all three of those, the square root of 49 is seven, the square root of 62 is not a nice number, it's not a perfect square, so we're going to leave it the square root of 62, and I know the square root of 64 is eight, because eight times eight gives me 64. Now if I had to pick one of those, because it says to determine which integer, that's just one of them, I wanna pick which one it's closer to. Well, 62 is definitely closer to 64 than 49. So eight would be the integer that I choose. 
Now, as far as your calculator approximation, you would type that into your calculator. Squiggle equals means approximately, and then you can choose to round to either one or two decimal places. I chose two, so that would be 7.87. Okay, so at this time, please pause the video and try the remaining exercises. And you can resume the video once you are comfortable and finished to check your answers. Okay, so you've had time to practice. Let's look at number five. The square root of 49 is just seven. Seven times seven is 49. If we look at 122, the square root of 122, that is not a perfect square. So we are going to approximate like we did in number six. 122 fits between which two perfect squares? Well, 121 would be just below it, and the next one larger would be 144. If we take the square root of all of those, the square root of 121 is 11. I would leave square root of 122 as the square root of 122, and the square root of 144 is 12. 122 is definitely closer to 121. So 11 would be the number I would use as my integer. And if I were to type this in the calculator to get a decimal approximation, I would end up with 11 point, and if I round correctly, it should be 0, 5. And then in number 8, square root of 400, that is a perfect square because 20 times 20 is 400. Lastly, we have... Number nine, which of the numbers in exercises five through eight are not perfect squares? Explain. So now we can see from above that it was 62 and 122, and we have to be able to explain why. So again, there's two re reasons we can do. We'll say because, now option one, and the one I tend to use the most, is no value times itself equals... 62 or 122. The other option would be to say no value of x satisfies the equation, or really equations, because there's more than one number, x squared equals 62 or x squared equals 122. So as a brief summary, Make sure we understand what that square root symbol is. The symbol square root automatically denotes a positive number. So for example, the square root of four is always two, not negative two, unless we talk about uh, positive versus negative. Perfect squares have square roots that are equal to integers. However, there are many numbers that are not perfect squares, and you looked at several examples today. That concludes our lesson on square roots.